Hello. Welcome to Arkansas International Camp Meeting. We are so happy you are here. At this year's ARICM, we have several different events planned just for you. To stay current with what is happening this week, please visit our website, fpcnlr.com, and our social media platforms. For all of the ministry, we would be honored if you would join us next door for a meal following our evening services. We are aiming to raise the largest missions offering in ARICM history. Throughout the services this week, you will see and hear from missionaries from all over the world who are endeavoring to spread the gospel to all nations. If you would like to be a part of this special offering, we have several ways to give. You can give by mail, text to give, cash app, or in the offering during service. Again, we are so glad you have taken time out of your busy summer schedule to be with us here at Arkansas International Camp Meeting. Worship will begin shortly.
your magnificent God. You've been mighty good to us. Come on, church, on the last night, if anybody got a reason to praise the Lord tonight. Our scripture comes from Acts chapter 2, verse 14. But Peter, standing up with the eleven, lifted up his voice and said unto them, Ye men of Judea, and all ye that dwell at Jerusalem, be this known unto you, and hearken to my words. For these are not drunk as ye suppose, but this is that which was spoken by the prophet Joel, and it shall come to pass in the last days, saith God, I will pour out of my I will pour out of my flesh, upon all my spirit, upon all flesh, and your sons and your daughters shall prophesy, and your young men shall see visions, and your old men shall see dreams. Somebody lift up your voice in the house again if you're ready to praise him. And somebody speak the name of Jesus in the house. Come on, somebody speak the name of Jesus in the building. How many of you know at the mention of his name, everything can change? Oh, yeah. If you walked in sick, you're going to walk out here. If you walked in bound, you're going to walk out free. Just the mention of his name. Just the mention of his name. Oh, yes, God. Just the mention of his name. Everything can change. Everything can change. Huh. If you walked in, hey, you're going to walk out.
to my attention this week, I'm not sure how we missed it, but we found out that this is the 75th Arkansas camp meeting, 75 years of there being a camp meeting in this central Arkansas 
area. And for you that weren't here Sunday night when Bishop preached, he showed uh, a video of an old camp meeting in out at Runyon. It's about 12, 15 miles north of town. And in that, uh, of course, it was, I guess, a reel-to-reel -reel type camera. I'm not sure how it was recorded, but it was recorded. And in that recording, you see people running, dancing, shouting. I want them to play just a little bit of that because I just want you to understand this is just the culture of this church and this camp meeting. We believe in demonstrative worship. We're not ashamed to be fanatical about Jesus. Come on, play a little bit of it. I want you to see it. Why can't we worship in an air-conditioned building? I realize it's crowded. I understand. I understand. You can't run the aisles. Please don't try. You may hurt somebody. But right where you're at, you can move your feet and wave your hands. Come on. Can we do it all over this house? Hallelujah, hallelujah. We're so thankful you're here with us this year at Arkansas International Camp Meeting. So thankful for all the ministry that is on this platform. Those of you out in the audience, thank you to all the ministry for being here tonight. We're so appreciative. All the saints of God that are in this building, thank you. And especially we're thankful to all the missionaries that have made this meeting so special by your being here. 
Hallelujah. We have missionaries from, from Brazil, India, South Korea, the Netherlands, Norway, Japan, Mexico, Honduras, Nicaragua. I think we ought to give God praise that this gospel is going. It's going to every nation, tribe, and tongue. This Holy Ghost is being poured out upon all flesh. Hallelujah. Turn to someone, greet them in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Greetings to all of our partners in missions. Greetings from Brazil. Greetings from the Lambeth family. Thank you very much for your faithful support across all of these years. At this very spot that I stand at right now is where the Apostolic Churches of Brazil started years ago in this very simple wooden chapel. Since those days, the Apostolic Church of Brazil has expanded, as you can see as we pan the camera, to this worldwide outreach center, especially focusing in on Brazil. We now are currently have apostolic flags planted in nine Brazilian states. However, the mission is not over with. There's 2,500 at least other cities and towns that have no true witness flag planted in their town. But in the end, things continue on, and the basic way of doing missions has not changed. You start in a small chapel, like we started, and then a small group of people show up, and the people in the chapel merge together, becoming a larger group of people, a larger building, and gradually that church is established in that city, often to be, often to be, the center of all gospel witness for that town. So today, I thank you for your faithful service and your faithful support to the apostolic family. However, please understand that missions will always be the same. It's a passion for souls that makes the difference. Whether you are in home missions, local missions, or foreign missions, always, always have a passion for souls, and God will reward you with many, many people being baptized in Jesus' name and being filled with the Holy Ghost. Thank you very much for being our faithful supporters. God bless you. Hallelujah. We're so thankful for the opportunity again this evening to receive our offering for missions. Every penny you give will go to missions. None of it stays here. There's no, no strings attached. We want to give the money to those that are doing a great work for God all across the globe. It spans organizations, continents, nations. We're here just to see the kingdom of God advance and go forward in Jesus' name. The choir's gonna sing, the ushers are coming at this time to receive our offering. Lord, we thank you for your goodness to your people. Lord, this is the last night, the last opportunity we have in this camp meeting to give. I pray that you would prompt people's hearts to give here. Do it liberally. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. I need somebody to reach way back tonight and remember where God brought you from. I need you to remember where God brought you out of. What God Come on, somebody, we're never going to forget what God has done for us. Yay. Come on, choir, sing it. Jesus, I'll never forget what you've done. What you've done.
for noise unto the king. Oh, 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 oh. Say, Jesus, Jesus, I'll never forget what you've done for oh, me. Oh, oh, oh. Jesus, I'll never forget how you how me free. Jesus, I'll never forget when you how you me brought me out.
your neighbor and tell him, I'll never forget. Hallelujah. Oh, hallelujah. Could we just give it up right now for the parking team? Don't we appreciate everyone that's been helping us get in and out of the building? They have done an absolutely incredible job. You may be seated, incredible job. And I want them to know publicly how much we appreciate all of their efforts uh, during this conference. And of course, they're helping us every service here uh, at our church. We're thankful for all the ministry that's here. If you are a pastor, evangelist, missionary, uh, lay minister recognized by your pastor, would you please stand right now? We want to recognize all the ministry here. We are so grateful uh, to all of you for coming. It means the world to us to have you here and we say thank you. And the way we want to show our appreciation is to invite you to a minister's banquet after this service. You're not gonna wanna miss it. It's gonna be in the great hall, in the chapel, and we invite all of you to come and be a part of that, all the ministry you and you're from here. They're gonna have uh, games, food trucks, uh, and you don't wanna miss it. Other than the food trucks, everything else there is free, uh, but you're gonna be, there's gonna be plenty to, over there to eat, so feel free to go there and eat, and it'll be staying open until 2 a.m. I want to also announce a Mid-America Conference that takes place in October, and it is October 12th and 13th, and I'm happy to announce uh, Pastor Jordan Copeland will be preaching Thursday night. I don't know where you are, Brother Copeland. Can you stand up, Brother Copeland? There we are. Hallelujah. And on Friday night, Brother Brandon Wilmoth, Redlands, California. Brother Wilmoth, are you here? He was here, oh, there he is, my friend. Brother Wilmoth has a very dear place in my heart. He introduced me to my wife at camp meeting. Tomorrow will be 21 years. So young people, this is why you need to come to camp meeting. You may just find your mate, hallelujah, so. I'm thankful, of course, for my wife. Love and appreciate her so much. She is such a support and a blessing to me. I'm thankful, yes, let's show her appreciation. That's all right. Thankful for my family that supports what we do here and then the church staff. Uh, I, this could not happen. I, I may be the face, but there are many church staff members that help make this happen. And then, then you add the volunteers to that, and it is, a, it is a huge group of people that help to make this happen. And I would just like, it's not about us, but I just think it would be in order and fitting for us to show appreciation to everyone that helps to make Arkansas International Camp Meeting what it is. Can we do that? Thank you, thank you for, for honoring them and appreciate them, and of course, I'm thankful for my father. If you weren't here Sunday night, you need to go back, listen to it, watch it. It was absolutely amazing. I don't know about you, but I wanna pass on a legacy to my family. Hallelujah. So that's, that's, that's all the announcement, announcements I have. The choir's gonna sing, we're gonna worship God, and then Pastor Tuttle is gonna come and preach the word of God to us. 
Why don't we stand all across the sanctuary? Come on, we have one more song. If you got one more praise, put your hands together.
If you know he's good, lift your voice. Give him a great praise. Hallelujah, 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 hallelujah. Hallelujah. I do want to also share with you the dates for camp meeting next year. It will be Saturday, June the 1st through Tuesday, June the 4th. So the 1st through the 4th, very beginning of the month of June. And we hope that you can join with us this next year, Lord willing. We're going to meet back here and have a Holy Ghost time all over again. Hallelujah. My heart is so full tonight. Every service has been absolutely ordained of God. Every message has been exactly what we needed to hear. Anybody feel that way tonight? From Friday night with Brother Stephen Jones and then Saturday night, Cody Mark, Sunday morning with Tim Adams, Sunday night, my father. Uh, Monday, we had a session on Spanish-speaking ministry. Uh, Brother Galindo, Brother Julio May just did an absolutely incredible job. And, and then Brother Andreasen from Norway preached such a powerful word. Monday, and then Monday night, my friend Brother Nathaniel Urshan brought a word last night. So thankful for that. Today, I heard wonderful things about in conversation with the bishops. I wasn't able to be there. I was in here with uh, all the ladies for the Ari Prado preached just a powerful message today. In fact, I wish everybody could have heard it. It was so powerful, so powerful. And then as only Bishop Booker can do, He brought us to our knees today with such an anointed word. Hallelujah. I'm still feasting on that word from today. And I'm so thankful to have here tonight my friend, Pastor Matthew Tuttle. I'll never forget. Yes. It's been, I guess, 17 years ago, something like that. He came here on a, on a Sunday night at the recommendation of his father-in-law. That's a good father-in-law that would recommend his son-in-law to preach. But he came here and he preached Matthew Tuttle style all the way back then. And I'll never forget that message about the stones crying out. And I knew then that I wanted him to be my friend. And I didn't know that it wouldn't be much longer and he would be going back to Holland. But when you want to be friends with somebody, you'll go to Amsterdam. You'll deal with jet lag. And I'm so thankful for Brother Matthew Tuttle and the voice that he is to the apostolic Pentecostal movement. I'm thankful for his family, thankful uh, for the Tuttle family, the dedication through the years to labor in a foreign country and to bring about a mighty revival in the nation of the Netherlands. And then Brother Tuttle comes to Texas and God gives him a great church in Vider, Texas, revival apostolic church. And, And I'm just so thankful for the Tuttle, for all that God has done for you. And I'm so thankful that you consented to be here tonight to once again preach to us. I don't know about you, but there's expectancy in my heart. I want to receive something for God. Brother Tuttle, come preach the word of God to us tonight. Thank you, Pastor Holmes. Praise the Lord, everybody. 
Praise the Lord, everybody else. <laughs> it's camp meeting Tuesday night. We've knocked the devil down, given him two black eyes. I say we cut his head off and stomp on it. <laughs> what a beautiful congregation and wonderful people. I give honor to you, and uh, what a high, high privilege and honor it is to be back at camp meeting. I was 28 years old when I first preached at camp meeting. I'm 42. Uh, kale smoothies. That's how I, I know you're like, how does he keep up those stunning good looks? Kale smoothie. That's what I do every morning. Bananas and blueberries, and uh, that's how I do it. So 28 years, a time you just blink and you're bald. I hope, Nick, come on, I'm bl blink again, I'll be a bishop. Now that'll be better than being bald, I tell you. I, I can't wait to be bishoping all over my church. I'm gonna bishop around and just, it's gonna be great. Can't wait. I'm just looking forward to the bishoping days. And uh, my family's, uh, Michelle's watching online, and my daughters, Michaela, and Savannah, they're here tonight. Where are you at? Where are you at, girls? They're back there. I see Brother Johnny Dixon, my Eastgate family. I got Eastgate family here all, all over the place. Kyle and Savannah. Let's stay away from Brother Wilmoth. We don't need no matchmaking going on tonight. We, we won't be doing none of that. They got along. They got about 20 more years. When I'm a bishop, they can look into that. Amen. <laughs> But uh, I, I love this camp meeting so much. It's meant so much to my family and I, myself, and uh, thankful for the privilege and high honor, the trust that Brother Holmes has had in me all these many years, and it's been just wonderful, wonderful, wonderful. I've got Alan. He came up with me. Uh, he got the Holy Ghost three Sundays ago, and uh, he's with me tonight, so I'm glad. I've been working with him for five years, and God filled him with the Holy Ghost. I'm glad Brother Helio's here and Brother Bridger and all my friends, and we could spend the night talking about all how great y'all are. The ministry, I love you, esteem you highly, and um, watch a camp meeting online this year. It was previous obligations withheld me from being here for the entire thing, but what an incredible time that you guys have had. And uh, man, then you had David Jennings up here. <laughs> Hey, and after 16, 17 years, there's nothing left to preach, so you're praying, come on, David, blow it up, dude. Come on, blow out, blow out. I mean, look, if you can't blow it out with David Jennings and 600 backup singers and a screen the size of Texas and keyboards having babies while they're playing them up there and <laughs> drum houses and microphones, and I thought, man, what am I going to do? They got all that, and it ain't blowing up. They're going to give me the mic. I guess the only difference is that the words they sang were written by man. And the words that I'll preach are written by God. And the flower withers. I said the grass withers and the flower will fade away, but the word of the Lord. Thy word is a lamp unto my feet and a light unto my Thy word was like fire. Mm, you get the word of God in you and it will, it'll get you moving. I'm thankful for the, the word. Mm, look at your neighbor and say, I came for a word. But don't worry, it ain't going to be a deep word. Y'all been to the depths. You know what, it's, what time it is. It's, t it's puddle time. Look at your neighbor and say, we're going to go through the drive through but I did not start my clock, girls, until I said all, I had to pay all those bills. When I pay the bills, that does not count on my time. So I'm paying the bills, now I'm starting the clock. John 11:38. 38, if you're there, say hallelujah. hallelujah. If you're still looking, say the devil's a liar. Devil's a liar. Wow, there's a lot of people still looking. <laughs> Good Lord, thank God I'm not preaching out of Zephaniah. We'd never get to go. <laughs> 
Jesus, therefore, again groaning in himself, cometh to the grave. It was a cave. And a stone lay upon it. Jesus said, Take ye away the stone. Martha, the sister of him that was dead, saith unto him, Lord, by this time he stinketh, for he hath been dead four days. Look at your neighbor and say, I can see it in the stink. Seeing in the stink. Father, I thank you for your word. It is timeless and unchanging. It is stable. I thank you for it. When everything in my world is changed, when people change, when things change, when I change, I turn to this pages of your book that never change. And tonight, I need you, Lord, to anoint your word in me to come forth to these people that I love so much. I pray, Lord, that it would come forth pure, unfiltered by my flesh, but directed by your spirit. Let it be received into the fertile soil of every heart, planted, watered. Let it bear fruit and benefit them for the remainder of their days. And as one people, we say in Jesus' name, you can be seated. I'm sure no one's ever heard this passage that I read tonight, so I thought I would use it for camp meeting. By this time, he stinketh. Uh, I, I'm here for the new people, the people that maybe just got into this thing, looking around at all the king bling, and you're going, woo, man, this is awesome. These people never have any problems. I want to be one of them. I, I, I mean, these people are just so great. I bet their armpits smell like unicorn burps. It's just great. They're just wonderful. Nothing could ever be wrong. Look at how they dress. Look at how they, let me just break it down for you. We look good because it's camp meeting, but we all got some stink going on. I, I, I said, I'm not here for you that fake it, but I'm here for somebody that's in it or knows what it's like to go through the times that stinketh. He stinketh. He stinketh. And as I read this, it, it, she, was, she wasn't telling her best friend that, that Lazarus stinketh. She was telling Jesus, my situation stinks. She was with Jesus and her situation stunk. She was in a bad situation and Jesus was there. And just because you get Jesus there doesn't mean you're not gonna have some stink in your life. Ah, I know, I know that all the all the Jesus is your boyfriend, you'll never have a problem, come to Jesus and all your troubles go away, preachers. Uh, they tell you a different story, but, but I make a living, I make a living repairing the ministerial malpractice of those guys, uh, and I gotta break it down and be real to you. There's gonna be some times uh, that the situation smells like the inside of a whale's belly. Uh, there's gonna be some times that you're gonna go around and, and you're gonna feel like putting a noose on your neck and feel like quitting and calling it complete. There's gonna be some times, now look, look around at all the people not clapping, they're just faking, but I'm for the ones that are standing. You, there's gonna be some people, you, you, it's gonna stink so bad, you're gonna, you're gonna wanna curse, quit, and pray for your mother-in-law to get healed. It's gonna get that bad. Ah, I'm here for those. You came, you hear the testimonies of how, I hear them too. These people, they just fall into the will of God. They just slip. Oh man, I just slipped into a blessing. Them people tick me off. I ain't here for you. I'm here for the people that we, we slip and we don't find the will of God. We end up in the hospital and we don't have insurance. I'm, I'm here for people that slip, and I don't slip up in a blessing. I smip, slip up into stuff that don't smell like, you know what I'm talking about. I slip into that kind of stuff. And then, and maybe the problem that is that when I slip into that stuff, I can't even say the word across the pulpit because we don't want to talk about that stuff. Instead, what you want the preacher to do is spray air freshener over it. But, but I, got, I, got a, I got a horse and a donkey, chickens, a dog, and a cat. And, 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 and that manure smells bad, but you know what smells worse is when you take air freshener and you try to spray pumpkin spice on top of a cow patty 
and something that smelled really bad just smells a, a whole lot worse. I, I didn't come for somebody that needs a cover-up. I came for somebody that needs a clean-up. I didn't come for you to spray air freshener on my situation. I came for somebody that said when I leave Camp Meeting 2023, I want to leave different. I want to leave with it clean. I need my marriage to be cleaned up. I need my body to be fixed up. I, I need my mind to be put back to, ah, could you just praise God like you know what it's like to slip into some stink to, to you. Your marriage isn't perfect, but you in the house of God. Your body's in pain, but you're giving him praise. You got to put your hands together. You've got to play, praise the Lord. There's a preacher with a word. I said with a sermon for your stink. In our text today, it's a man who's sick by the name of Lazarus of Bethany, 11 and 1 of John. Mary and Martha are his sisters. And now look, we ain't talking about a headache. We ain't talking about an ingrown fit. We ain't talking about the reason you don't come to church. <laughs> we talking about he's dying. That's what that word means. He's dying. How do you know he's dying? Verse 3, his sister said, Lord, the one you love is sick. The one you, that word means dying. You don't call for Jesus just for a headache. You don't interrupt the master. No, but they say, hey, he's on his way to death. I've been around. I'm 42 now. 14 years I've been pastoring, but I was raised in a preacher's home. I've been a lot, around a lot of dying people. I've watched a lot of people die. There's some signs ah, that I've witnessed, and I looked them up online, because I know that's what you're all going to do anyway. One of the first signs that somebody is dying is they, they lose their appetite. Oh, they used to love to eat. They couldn't get enough of it. Give me a little more bread. The sermon was never too long, but they lose their appetite. The next thing is they start being less thirsty. They're not thirsty. They used to be couldn't get enough to drink, couldn't, couldn't speak in to tongues long enough, but I'm, I'm dying. It's a sign that you're, that you're dying, and the next sign is that you're tired. I'm tired. I, you know, I, I work late, and, you, and so you come late and leave early and give up ministries because I'm, I'm tired, and then the skin starts to feel cold. Pain. If you ever visit somebody dying, they, they don't talk much about their children or grandchildren. It's mostly about the pain. I'm hurting and how bad they hurt and how bad they've been hurt. It's all about the hurt and the pain. They're dying. They can't hold their heads up. All they do is look down. All they can talk about and see is, is the floor and the negative. They're dying. And Jesus gets the word. He's dying. But he delays two days. He, he waits. He waits for him to die. He, he, he's, he no doubt figured out that it's, it's easier to deal with a dead man four days than a man pretending to live. Prodigal, I've, I'm going to just have to let you go because you're just going to have to hit the pigs. Preacher friend, I know it hurts when you see them and they start dying. I know it hurts your heart and you lose sleep. I do too. Where the one sinner saint sits on that front row on fire and you can't feed them. There's nothing you can preach that they won't obey. And then all of a sudden they slip to the middle row. And next thing you know, they're hurt at the dumbest, stupid, most idiotic little thing you said. Then they used to speak in tongues and be in church every day, praying in the Holy Ghost, but, but they're not praying like they used to. Boy, it'll, it'll hurt your heart, but some people, you just got to let them die. Ooh, that's hard. But Jesus said it was good. He had to die. 
Then Martha, as soon as she heard that Jesus was coming, went out. And we know this. Mary sat at the house and she, she says to him, Lord, if thou had been here, my, my brother had not died. Mar Martha, Martha goes out and preaches him a sermon. And, 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 and she says, if you would have done it the way that I said you would have, should have done it, then it would have ended up the way that I said it would have ended up. But, but I'm, she's a good Pentecostal lady. But I know that even now, whatsoever thou will ask, uh, it's going to happen. She didn't believe that any more than you believe it. When you lose your job and your wife leaves you and your dog get hit by an 18-wheeler and you're like, oh, you know, uh, I, I know, you know I, I lost my job and my, my husband walked out on me, but the Lord is going to provide. But deep down inside, you wish his head would blow up. Uh, deep down inside, you prayed that God would strike your boss with lightning. And the truth is, it stinks. That's how it really is. Let's just break down how it really is in your mind. And Jesus said unto her, thy brother shall rise again. He didn't say that he was going to rise again later. He said he's going to rise again. And she said, I know it'll get better in the rapture. And some of you believe that the, the best your life is ever going to be, uh, come on, is in some distant place. Uh, but I've come to remind you uh, that Jesus didn't say uh, it was in the rapture. He said, I am the resurrection and the life. I am. I believe in a rapture. And won't we have a time when we get over yonder? But I'm not going to delay the favor, the blessing, and the healing uh, to some distant place. Uh, I say, uh, be what you are today. I am. He didn't say, I can. He said, I am. Because nowhere in the Bible does it say that God can but 157 times it says God is. If the Bible was about what God can do, then you will try to manipulate God into doing it. Well, if I do this, then God can do this. And if I do this, then God can do this. That's what Martha is. Martha is a master manipulator. If I have him for dinner and I cook for him, I'll, I'll manipulate him into getting what I want from him. If I, she, she is a control freak. You, you hear it in her, if you had been here, See, control freaks are micromanagers that can only see mi microcosms. They, they don't have a grander view. If you had been here, I was there. Just because you didn't see me, Martha, doesn't mean I wasn't there. You're just a control freak that needs to see how everything works out. And I didn't... And I'm not moved by your manipulation. I'm moved by your faith. It, the question isn't, can God? The question is, can you believe God? Can you believe for he is the resurrection and the life. He is the way. He is the truth. Some of you are bitter because you worked 80 hours in the, in the serving rooms in order for God to bless you. But God doesn't bless you just because you serve him. He blesses you because you believe him. Oh, I wish I had somebody that's in the house with cancer and the devil's knocked you down for every reason you're not worthy that could say, I believe God. I believe God. I believe God. I believe God. And if you, if you, if you live always pursuing what he can give you, you're going to end up like a, a, an angry Martha. Control freak you. Oh, I just, God, I know you're not here. No, nah, he's there. Well, if God would have just done it, if he'd have just been, he's there. Just because you cannot see him does not mean he's not present. He is there. Look at your neighbor and say, God is here. 
And when she had so said, she went away and called Mary, her sister, secretly saying, the master has come. He, she lies, go, 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 go tell, go, go be angry. See, angry people want you to be angry with them. Go, Mary, go. I, I, I've learned that real angry and really professional angry people don't scream at you, they whisper at you. Let, let, let's be secret sisters. Now, what you're wanting to be is a sister with a secret. You got to be careful for all that hate me whisper together against me. You, you got to be weary of the whispers, people that talk about you but won't talk to you. The internet's filled with them. They'll criticize you, but they'll never call you. Come on, somebody. And that attitude is contagious. And the next thing you know, you're fighting someone's battle that's not even your battle. You better be careful, Mary. Uh, you better be careful. Uh, and the Bible says that she went out uh, and she repeats the same words that Martha. She, she, but she throws herself down at Jesus' feet and begins to worship him. Uh, I've come to tell you, I know it's simple. It's a reminder. But it's okay not to understand God. It's okay to say, God, I don't understand what you're doing, but what's not okay is to allow what you don't understand to hinder you from worshiping him. While I may not understand you, I'm still going to worship you. While I don't know what you're doing in my life, I wonder if I got somebody looking around. It doesn't smell right, but I'm going to praise him. I'm going to praise him. I'm going to bless the Lord. Don't let your frustration rob you of your praise. I wonder if I got a pastor's wife just a little frustrated with it uh, that could give him praise. Uh, I wonder if I got a young man or a young lady uh, that could give him praise in your frustration. I don't understand. But I'm going to give him praise. I'm going to give him praise. And Jesus weeps, not because Lazarus is dead, but because they won't believe him for now. Believe him for right now. Heaven, heaven weeps when you go home tonight, missing out on whatever promise God has for you tonight. Uh, I believe that heaven is saddened by the saint that comes to church but doesn't visit the altar. I'll say that again. I said, heaven weeps when you come to church and sit on the back row, but never get to the altar, the place where God has laid treasures and miracles and the miracle. Yeah, I know y'all are waiting for me to get to a fancier point. Literally, no fancier point. 17 years, I've used them all. I'm going to preach what God said. When you come to church, you didn't come to be an ornament. You came to be a recipient of his glory and a giver of glory. So don't let your frustrations rob you of the blessing that God has for you. Take me to the stone, Martha. Take me to the stone. But, 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 but Jesus, if we go to the stone by now, it, it stinks. Because I've, I'm at a little, I, I've been, I've been, I've already, my mind has been following the decomposition process in my mind. It's the fourth day he stinks. And the truth is, she was right. He did stink. Four minutes after you die, it begins. And it happens in four stages. The first one is called self-digestion. It's the first stage of human decomposition is self-digestion. It begins immediately after death. As soon as the blood circulation and respiration stop, the body has no way of getting oxygen or removing waste. Excess carbon dioxide causes an acidic environment, causing membranes in the cell to rupture. The membranes release enzymes that begin eating the cells from the inside out. Before you see that they're dead on the outside, they have died on the inside. And it begins eating its way out. The next step is rigor mortis. This is the stiffening of the muscles. The first outward sign that they are dead is that they cannot move.
Brother Holmes said it. Wait, we were over here shouting a while ago. Brother Holmes said, you know what? You got to get loose. You got to know. Did you say it, Brother Holmes? Did you tell me? What did you say? Something about being loose. You got to get free in the Holy Ghost if you want to see sinners get free. He said, you got to get free. You got to get loose. But when you're dead, you cannot get loose. The reason some of you can't shout has nothing to do with your personality. It's an inner decomposing. You're decomposing. Well, I've heard about Lazarus my whole life. It ain't about that. It's about you getting blessed. It's about you getting blessed. Stiff as a board. Then small blisters begin to appear on the skin's surface. Now you start seeing small things manifest. You have to look close, but little things are different. The body will appear to have a sheen due to ruptured blisters, and the skin's top layer loosens because of the rot within. What manifests first is the loosening of the skin. They were once firm, but it's loose now. Things that used to be firm now fall away. I, I'm, not, I'm not scared of a man or worried about a man who has convictions that are higher than mine. I don't worry even much about a man that has standards a little lower than mine. What scares me is when they come loose. Let me say it again. You have standards. I love those standards. What scares me is not maybe that you have a little bit lower or much higher. What scares me is when they start changing. You used to be against disco church. Now you got disco church. It used to be wrong for your boys to wear shorts. Now I see them around town wearing shorts. Come on, somebody. And I'm going to preach it. You used to see them, come on, beards. Now all of a sudden, well, I, it ain't about in the back. I'm not talking about it. What I'm saying is you're changing. And when it comes loose, it scares me. It, because the looseness on the outside is a manifestation that something's rotting on the inside. Thank God for a man that preaches what he preached in 1995 in 2023. Thank God, don't move the landmark. Don't change it. Don't change. Come on, it used to be that you were firm about radical worship, but now I preach at your church and you got the lights off. I'm off my notes. Let me tell you why they turn the lights off. So they don't have to see it. Turn the lights on. The job of this pulpit is to be the watchman on the wall. We cannot watch in the dark. We are not a charismatic church. We are not a charismatic church. If the lights are off, we cannot see to run the aisles. If the lights are off, we cannot see to dance in the Holy Ghost. If the lights are off, we can't see many skirts and makeup. If the lights are turned around. Well, I don't really think it matters, but it used to matter. What changed? I'll tell you what changed. You can't smell it yet, but it's loosening. I know they're going to eat me on the internet because they don't have the courage. But be weary of the whisperer. Go 
ahead and secretly talk, but I'll stand before you and declare there's still one God, there's still Jesus name baptism, holiness and separation matter. We look different, we shout, we dance. Our women have long uncut hair and it is the glory of God unto them. Our men's hair is short, our hearts are pure. We, we don't lie, we don't steal, we don't cheat. Oh, you're just feeding red meat to the wolves. No, I'm reestablishing truth and making sure we stand firm. Come out, come out from amongst your kindred. Come out from amongst your father. Abandon your culture. That was the call. Come out, Darren Gilbert. Come out. How do I get out? How do you get out? How do I get out? How do you get out, Gilbert? If I tell you to leave your kindred and come out, how are you going to do it right now? Do it. There it is. Do it again. There it is. You've got to walk. <laughs> Sit down on your seat. Sit down. Come out. No. No. You can't come out without standing up. <laughs> Let me tell you what God told Abraham to do. He said, Abraham... Take a stand. The only way you can come out of your culture is if you're willing to stand up and stand firm. The promised seed of Abraham does not scoot their way in, does not crawl their way in. The promised seed of Abraham takes a firm step. There's a promise when you stand. There's a promise. Preacher, keep on standing. Keep preacher, keep on standing. Stop worrying about the internet critics. Stop worrying about the Facebook gossipers. Stop worrying about the Instagram haters. Stand, stand, stand. We're going to a land. Boom. Keep on standing. If you've got a pastor that still stands, you ought to give God a praise so loud. Go ahead and take a stand, Bradley. And I know they might curse you, but God will bless you. He'll bless you so big that the cursor's got more to curse you with. I'm so glad God blesses me so big. My haters get hate on me, not just because what I preach, but because how much favor I've got. Hey, hater, you can join the club. There's more room for men to stand. Hmm. Things are becoming loose and then they begin to bloat. The human decomposition consists of bloating of the body because it's no longer giving. <laughs> I said it's no longer giving, so it's not paying its tithe anymore. Did y'all notice when I was preaching against all that stuff? They're like, ah! and then I'm like, pay your tithe. They're like, hey, preach, Pastor. If you can't get excited about paying your tithe and giving in your offering, you have a problem. That's how I keep the gook out. I'm 
Um, <laughs> enzymes begin to produce gases, fumes. So now they're stiff and hard, but their skin is loose. They don't move, but they also ha don't stand firm. <laughs> Bloated and fuming. You can't touch it. It doesn't even really have an odor, but you sense something's off. It's the fumes of inner decay. The next phase, the sulfur-containing compounds that bacteria release cause the discolorization of the skin. Their world becomes discolored, and the people that used to love them deeply, they despise them now. Truths that they used to shout about, they twist. What used to be beautiful now is ugly. They're dead. Now, in addition to the, the discolorization, insect activity has become very present. Being close to them will make you squirm. Mm because under the surface, maggots have already begun their feast. The microorganisms and bacteria produce extremely unpleasant odors. It's called putrefaction. It's where the odor comes from, the smell that they're dead. Since they're no longer naturally able to release what's within them, they become putrid. It will come out one way or the other. They've hoarded up their talents, their giftings, damned up their praise and hallelujah. They've become bloated and now they stink and everything that comes out of them is nasty. Everything that comes out of them is negative. They're dead. It is stage three around day three that active decay fluids released through the orifices indicate the beginning of this active decay as organs and muscle and skin become liquid. Where there was once a heart that beat for the things of God, there's now nothing solid. Muscles are now no longer strong. They're water. They will go wherever, seeping into the dirt, disappearing into a stream far below the earth. Next, and the body's soft tissue begins to decompose. Even the soft part that they said would always be able to be touched is gone. They've lost their mass, their strength, and one strong, active, powerful person is now left with hair and bones, and Jesus shows up. And says, where did you lay him? Groaning at himself, 38, he comes to the, ca the grave, but it wasn't a grave. It was a cave. A stone lay upon it. It's, it's what they do. They get into holes in the ground far away from people. Walls are built so no one could get to them. It was not a stone rolled before, because that's not what it said. It was laid upon. It was a hole in the ground. That's where these cadavers are in caves covered by walls. No one's gonna get to me, and no one will hurt me. Take me, take me to the cadaver in the cave, he said. Take me, take me to where you've laid him. They arrive, and he says, take away the stone, and Martha, the sister of him that was dead, saith unto him, Lord, he stinketh, for he hath been dead for days, Jesus. Behind the stone is a fuming, faithless man. Behind the stone is, is not the same guy you knew. The world has changed in his view. It was once beautiful, but no longer. His entire world is black. It's awful. Jesus, when, if we take away the stone, inside the grave is a man that's been eaten up. Maggots are feasting and have already flown away in the form of a fly. He, 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 putrefaction has set in. Jesus, it's bad. Nothing good comes out of him. It's, it's where he sees everything in darkness. It's, uh, it's how he speaks. It's how he smells. You don't want to open that because he's not just dead. He's decayed. He's a skeleton of stinking Jesus. Said, Take away the stone. And they took 
took away the stone from the place where the dead was laid. And Jesus didn't speak. He lifted up his eyes. He, he didn't talk about his nose. Doesn't talk about what he smells. It talks about what he could still see. Mm. Putrefaction fills the air, but he doesn't mention it. It doesn't talk about how bad it is. It talks about his eyes. It lifts up his eyes. In the stink, what you have to do, what you have to do when it stinks is ask yourself, can I still see? I know it smells bad. I know your marriage is a mess, but can you still see him? Can you still see him? Mary's on one side. Throwing up in her hands, Martha's on the other gagging. The rest have stepped back with their, their rags in front of their faces, attempting merely to, and only to breathe through their, their mouths. And with every breath, they're saying, this is ridiculous and, and it's impossible. But in the, in the middle of the stink, he lifts up his eyes, the Bible says, uh, and he gave, he gave thanks. Because when you can see in the stink, you can shout in it too. I didn't come to ask you how bad it stunk. I come to ask you, can you still shout? I didn't come to ask you how bad it was. I came to ask you, can you still praise him? Can you still pray? I know the nostrils are filled with the putrefaction of a past promise. I know your mind can hardly process through the aroma of what should have been a grand day, but can your legs still move can your mouth still say thank you Jesus I need somebody at camp meeting and your nostrils are filled with stink that could put your hands together and say it smells bad but I see the Lord high and lift it up you see he didn't look in the cave. He looked up at the Father. You've got to stop looking at the backslidden saint and start looking at Jesus. Get off Instagram. Get off Facebook. And lift up your eyes. Oh, well. Nobody's living for Jesus. I'm all by myself. Turn around and look around you. You're looking at me. Turn around and look around you. Do a 360. On my way here, people think I have like this grand power at camp meeting. Just for all of y'all, I get one parking spot. I get one seat. That's what I get. Can you get me seats? Do you think you could get me seats? Can you get me a parking spot? Can you get me a whole row of seats? Can you? You know why they're doing that? Because the place is packed wall to wall. What are you saying? I'm saying the devil's a liar. There are people living for God. So many, you got here three hours early just to get a seat. The devil is a liar. And you ought to stomp on his lying up. I just wish I had somebody that would clap their hands like the devil's face is in between it. Somebody shout yes. And in the middle of the stink, he began to praise God. <laughs> Bring me a chair. That's how it began. In the beginning was darkness, chaos and void. The world needed a word. I said the world needed let there be light. Jesus hasn't even said anything to Lazarus. He's just been busy praising God. What would happen 
if you said less about what they said about you on the internet. What if you stopped repeating? Come on, some of you have the doctor's report memorized, but you don't even have a Bible verse memorized. But what would happen if you memorized a song instead of memorizing a prescription? What would happen? Ooh, I need a word, then learn a song. And the Bible says that the earth is his Heavens are his throne and earth is his footstool and he sits upon his throne in grandeur and glory. And the earth is in chaos. It's in a stinky situation. And he sits there and the earth needs him to say, let there be. <laughs> but before he says, let there be, he's in heaven seated. You know what's going on in heaven while he's seated? Let's recreate it. I'll tell you what was going on. Does anybody know? I have to tell you. This is wonderful. I get to bring grand revelation. I never do this. Normally, this is like Brother Urshan and Brother Booker. This is amazing, Brother Urshan. Wow. They're all looking at me like, wow, you know something I don't know. Normally, they're like, I already know this, but I'll shout because he gets more excited than I do. <laughs> wow. This is amazing. All of the angels in heaven were going, holy, holy. That's what was happening. He was... Do you mind being God for just a minute, Brother Urshan? I know you're not God, but just for the sake of the illustration, they're going to make fun of us on the internet anyway. Let's give it all the way to them. Go ahead. You be God. And God is sitting there, and all he has to do is say, let there be light. But he can't say it because... The angels have to start worshiping first, so let's recreate how we get God to speak. Are you ready? You be the angels. He's being God. Go. Holy. 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 I see an angel not saying holy. I need you to leave heaven. I'm going to kick you out of heaven if you don't say holy. That's how. That's how. Nope. I think I see somebody in the mezzanine back there not saying holy. No, I don't hear you, mezzanine. Holy. Holy. Holy, holy. Boy, I don't like these redundant songs where all they do is say the same thing over and over. That's all it was. Holy, all over. And, and in the middle of praise, God said, Let there be light. Let there be light. If you need a word in your stink, here's what you do. Holy, holy. he had praised he spoke 11 and 43 of John they're supposed to be following me on these fancy screens I'll come divide her. I'll teach you how to do it it's amazing and when he had thus spoken he cried with a with a loud voice Lazarus, come forth. <laughs> Why? Why does it have to be loud? Because he had been dead for four days. He was not calling Lazarus. He was creating Lazarus. <laughs> the voice of God had to be loud because it had to summon the maggot that had turned into a fly and flown six miles away to return into a maggot that had to spit out the bit of intestines so that he could put it back together again. And when he said, come forth, the sulfur-containing compounds that the bacteria had released that changed the way he saw things reversed and the compounds had to go back into the bacteria so that the discolorization could be restored to normal. When he said, Lazarus, 
Ghost, come forth. The heart muscle that had turned to liquid and seeped into a, a stream down deep below the earth had to reverse its course at the majestic magnetic force of the master pulling it out. Instead of going down, it had to start going back up in, back up into the, to the heart, the skin that was fluid. Now is firm again. The rigor mortis that had hindered the praise, all of a sudden, had to restore its dexterity. And the devil told you your backslidden son couldn't come back. And the devil told <laughs> The enzymes that had been eating him up from within would have to regurgitate their meal piece by piece. 44. And he that was dead. Not a new dude. Same dude. What are you saying? I'm saying there's backsliders coming home. The ones that are hating on us and talking about us and dirty, they're coming home. They're gonna come, don't you retaliate in the comment section. Don't you come back. Don't you spend time in secret talking about what they're saying in public. What you do is get into this house and you grab your hater's name and you put it in your hand and you say, hate on hater. Hate on hater. I'm gonna bless the Lord because he's about to put you, he's about to restore unto you the years that the canker worm, that the caterpillar, caterpillar that the palmer worm has stolen. <laughs> 47 minutes, I gotta go, I'm gonna get in trouble. Come forth. And he came. He came forth, bound with a napkin on his face, hand and foot. Now, Lazarus' tomb, I've got a picture of what they presume it to be. Maybe they can put it on one of these little cheap iPhone screens. No, 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 look at the, the, look at the, look at, look at the picture, Bradley, look. Now notice this, Jesus didn't go into the tomb, he didn't go into the cave, he called him out of the cave. He, he does not go where demons are. Hmm. Now notice, there are 26 steps, rugged and jagged, that lead down to where he was laying. Yeah, what are you saying? I'm saying he was bound hand and foot. His face was covered, and he was 26 steps in the earth. And you thought you was gonna come out cute. <laughs> Baby, if you can't see and you're bound, and you've gotta climb 27 steps, You looking at us, funny visitor. What are they doing? Coming out of our caves. Coming up. Ah, and I don't care what you say I look like. I'm not going to live bound no more. I don't care if you make fun of me. I'll trip. I'll fall. I'll bang my head. But I'm coming out. Then, 
Y'all ain't shouting. I'm, 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 I'm done. I'm, baby, I'm done. Mikhail, I'm done. Look at your neighbors say, you're coming out. Now look at your other neighbors say, but it ain't going to be cute. That's why when we get home from church, it looks like this. Come on, somebody. What you saw on that screen wasn't just the culture of the camp meeting. I don't mean to correct, but I'm almost a bishop. Not the culture of the camp meeting. It's the culture of the people that come out of caves. And if you just start keep, if, if you just make an excuse and say, well, that's just Pentecostal worship, you'll be bound up in a cave for the rest of your life, smelling the stink of your own putrefaction. But oh, to God, you could ever find the power of a, of a radical. And the same people that, said, that bound him up, he said, now, You've got to loose him. Now, do you know how they bound him up? You know how they bound him up? You, you tell him I get to give two revelations in one sermon. They wrapped him up. He was wrapped up all the way like a mummy. Am I right? Come here, Zach. Come, come here, bro. You too. Now, if you wrapped him up, he said you've got to unwrap him. Now, how are you going to do that? Grab one piece. Keep going round. Keep going round. Keep going round. Because there's something that happens when Pentecostals. I know you can't hear it yet, but keep going round. I know it's not coming down yet, but just keep going around. And around, and around, and around, and around, and before long, you're gonna see they're alive. Here's what I need you to do get with your brother, one or two of you. Make just a little bit of space if you can. Come up here. Who wants to have revival in your city? First preacher right here. Get right there. Stand right there, Dayton. Okay, that's it. Yeah, the rest of y'all, sorry, slow pokes. Dayton gets revival first. Yeah, how are we going to do it? We're going to get behind me, and we just going to go around. <laughs> yeah! Yeah, 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 yeah. Dayton, don't move. Stay there, Dayton. It's coming off. Yes, sir. Eonak <laughs> had the spirit of death, the spirit of divorce, the spirit of depression. I feel something being unwrapped. Get with your neighbor. Get with your neighbor. Get with your neighbor and start unwrapping something. Start loosening something. Start getting somebody free. I know there's I know there's not enough space for everybody to have somebody to dance around them but I'm gonna have to do like God did when he was trying to speak and say if you don't want to participate you are dismissed to the taco stand if you'd rather have a taco than a victory you're dismissed if you'd come on if you'd rather have a munchie than a miracle now's your time to leave but if you need something from God I need you to reach down 
and take one piece of your grave clothes. Take it just invisibly. Take it. Depression. What is it? What's the, what is it? What's the miracle you need? Hold it in your hand and I'm about to teach you what you do next. On the count of three, I call it the Tuttle Twirl. And when you begin to turn, you are going Karoma Sada Yamaha. You're about to lose something in your mind. You're about to lose something in the spirit. And something's about to come out of you that has died in you. A promise that you gave up on. God has come to this place and said, take me to the place on the count of three. I need you to begin to spin in place. If you're not going to spin, get out. We need everybody on on board. One, two, three. Hallelujah. I'm free. It's unraveling. It's opening. It's spinning. Shout, shout, shout. Praise ye the Lord. Praise him with the timbrel. Praise him with the dance, the twirl. That's what dancing is. Twirling, shouting. Praise ye the Lord. Now get with somebody and dance like it's the last night.
If you're here tonight and you need a miracle in your body, the miraculous is in this room. I've been sensing it in prayer. Somebody, come on, signs follow them that believe. But you walked into this room and you have a need physically in your body. I want you to lift your hands towards heaven right now. I'm talking about something very serious. You need a miracle. Don't raise your hand out of habit. I want you to be very intentional. You have a, a need in your body. Now I need the body of Jesus Christ to look around with your eyeballs and look at those hands that are up near you. If you are a brother and you see a brother with a raised hand, I want you to connect to that brother, even if you have to touch another brother. But every hand will be, the measure of your faith is linked to what you do with your hands. They shall lay their hands upon the sick. That's what believers do. The true test of your faith right now is what your hand is doing. Sister with a sister, lay your hand. There is no one too good. Lay your hand. And I want you to begin to speak, speak life. Speak it with authority. Speak it in the name of Jesus. Go ahead. Father, in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, I speak to the sickness of the body, the mind, the spirit, the family, or finance. I rebuke the curse that has been spoken from the adversary. May it return upon the one who sent it. I speak healing virtue. Let it now begin to flow through the hand of the believer into the receiver. I pray, Lord, that it would work innerly and begin to manifest with pain being gone, with clarity of mind and thought. Let it be joy that begins to bubble as strength comes back into the spirit of the man. I speak in the name of Jesus Christ to the spirit of infirmity. In the name of Jesus, I pray loose. There it is. Now let it come. Let it flow. Let it flow. Let it flow out of you. Let it flow out of you. Let it flow out of you. Every believer, it's flowing out of you. Hallelujah. That's it. Go ahead. Let the Holy Ghost come out of you. For with stammering lips and another tongue, they're going to speak. Go ahead and let it flow. Let it flow. Let it flow. Come on, mental ailment, depression. In the name of Jesus, spirits of perversion that have linked themselves to families. I rebuke you in the name of Jesus. I rebuke generational curses where the father's teeth are set on edge. Come on, because of the children's teeth are set on edge because of father's actions and deeds. But in Israel, the curse is broken. Let it be broken in the name of Jesus. Let it be broken under the authority and the power of the name of Jesus. Let us reiterate again, God, in the name of Jesus. If you don't know what to say, begin to say the name of Jesus. If you don't know how to pray, the Bible says you can pray. Come on in an unknown tongue. Go ahead, speak. Go ahead, speak healing virtue. Let the gift of the Spirit be in operation.
virtue is flowing, virtue is flowing, you are healed, virtue is flowing, virtue is flowing, virtue is flowing.
because you've repented of your sins and in obedience to the Word of God, I now baptize you in the name of Jesus Christ for the remission of all of your sins. First Pentecostal Church of Prairie County in Hazen, Arkansas, and this is Clara Anderson. She said, Pastor, I want to be baptized tonight. They said, will you baptize her here at Camp Meeting 2023? Absolutely. She's already received the Holy Ghost, but we're going to baptize her in the name of Jesus for the remission of her sins. Claire Anderson, by the confession of your faith and obedience to the Word of God, I now baptize you in the name of Jesus Christ for the remission of all your sins.
Hallelujah. This is Brother Darius. Because you've repented of your sins and in obedience to the Word of God, I now baptize you in the name of Jesus Christ for the remission of all of your sins. Brother Marshawn, because you repented of your sins and in obedience to the word of God, I now baptize you in the name of Jesus Christ for the remission of all of your sins.
If you can't find no help next to you, move around the sanctuary and find you somebody else that believes the devil is still alive. Pick them up. 
And what is love for me when I think of his goodness? How is that me free? I could dance.
sake of his goodness, how he set me free, I can shout, 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 all day, all night, 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 all day, when I think of his goodness, what is that for me?
make a little bit of room in this area right here. Yeah, right here. Make just a little bit of room. Go ahead and move back just a little bit. You young men that are praising up here, I want you to go light a fire. Light a match down there. Are you ready? Let's go, everybody.
Tonight is your night. 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 I just wish I had somebody that believed it. That tonight is your night. In the name of Jesus. Tonight is your night.
If you look around you and you find a tambourine, I want you to pick it up. Did you bring your praise with you? 